week's episode of Tokyo Ghoul Route A, Yoshimura the One-Eyed Owl was seemingly killed, when out of nowhere coming from the sky like a crimson comet of destruction was the second One-Eyed Owl. In this week's episode, he brings along some friends, the entire Algiri group. This week's episode was action freaking Pat, there were so many amazing scenes this week. Kaneki vs. Amon, the death of Takizawa, the reveal of Hide at the end, and let's not forget the real formal introduction of Arima. This guy is a freaking badass. Probably one of the most badass humans that I've seen in Tokyo Ghoul. And I'm not even sure if he's fully human. That's how awesome this guy is. And he doesn't even say a damn word. We know nothing about this character outside the fact that everybody loves him. And he's got some amazing weapons. And he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with a one-eyed owl. And seems to have the advantage in the entire battle. So let's just talk about some of the highlights. The episode opens up immediately with Shinohara being killed by the one-eyed owl. Which causes Juzo to freeze freak out and try to attack. This scene is really depressing because this is the first time in the series that we've actually seen Juzo in like this state of desperation. It's kind of messed up actually seeing him beaten so badly and it's not until Arima finally shows up that the tables are eventually turned on the one-eyed owl. But this is when the other Algiri members just come in and start raining down from the skies like a plague of death. It's really freaking messed up. They all just start taking out everyone. And what I also really love about this is we get to see some of the other characters, which I wish they would have used a little bit more because they're just so awesome looking. There's the character of Tatara, who's the guy who has the weird looking red ninja mask and he wears the big long white coat. And then there's his associate Noro, who has that one creepy mask. And they end up killing Takizawa in what might be one of the most disturbing scenes of the series. Because I just feel for this kid because he's a freaking rookie. He put everything he had on the line. He was probably promising Akira that he was going to hold the fort down, and even at the end when he was trying to fight, he ended up getting killed, tossed into the air, and Noro used one of his weird, freaky, nasty-ass tentacles to tear him to shreds. I'm not really sure what happened to him. They may have censored it just a little bit. Safe to say, I don't think he's going to get out of this situation alive. Another big highlight from this week's episode was definitely Kaneki versus Amon. This fight was cool because it started out kinda simple, just Amon using his typical abilities and Kaneki just dodging them, jumping around and using his Kagune, but it's when Amon finally transformed his weapon that things got really awesome. So, before he basically just had like that weapon that you see in like American Gladiators, but then it transforms into this massive lance drill weapon, which is just so awesome and it also fuses into his arm and creates armor. It's definitely the coolest Amon moment I've seen from the series, and they just wail on each other. They think that maybe they cannot fight and talk to each other. They both have flashbacks to those moments when they first had their battle, but this is going to be, it looks like, the final battle for both of them, and I honestly can't tell how they're both going to get out of these situations. They make it seem like Amon dies in this week's episode, and it hasn't been officially confirmed, but there's a lot of evidence pointing to that, because as soon as he gets attacked at the end, they cut to Mato immediately, and she has like this weird psychic link with him when he's being attacked or possibly killed and when she finally meets up with him in the body you actually don't get to see it but she falls to her knees and that's it. I really don't know what's going to happen to Amon but I really hope he's alive because he's one of my favorite human characters from the show. He was originally that was until they decided to introduce Arima. This is a character who all of my commenters and subscribers have been talking about for a long time, and I didn't know what they were going to do with this guy at all. I've just been hearing that he's going to come in and start messing shit up, and he leaves one hell of an impression. He just appears out of nowhere in front of the one-eyed owl and starts summoning two different weapons which do drastic things. He has this one like big cannon-like sword which can actually fire electricity and even cut up the owl's limbs. He also has this other weird almost lance-looking weapon which can summon these big spires and spikes from the ground and he uses both of these in tandem to catch the one-eyed owl off guard even cutting off one of its arms this is when the owl decides to make a quick escape where it actually swallows the body of Yoshimura and jumps down a building side Arima continues to follow which is freaking awesome he does almost nothing in this episode but his action seats are definitely some of the highlights of the series I especially love that even when he's activating abilities and saying his attacks you still don't even know what he's saying He's so mysterious and awesome, and just him being around has actually like bolstered the strength of all of the other soldiers who are left, and they all start fighting back against the Algiri group and start to win. It is freaking great. The end of the episode, 
ends with something that I think we've all been waiting to see since the very beginning of Tokyo Ghoul, and that's when Kaneki and his friend Hide are finally going to reveal to each other what the real roles are. And Hide is actually the one who ends up saving Kaneki. He brings him into the Onteku coffee shop and even makes some coffee for both of them, and it ends with just both of them together in the dark room, and it's just so ominous. I don't even know what's going to happen here. And make sure to stay tuned. There is a post credit scene where they follow up on what happened when the one-eyed owl swallowed up Yoshimura. You get to see in the middle of this back alley, the owl ends up spitting up Yoshimura all over the place, and that's when we get the first reveal that the one-eyed owl is indeed that one green-haired girl with the weird bandages. Her name is Eto. It's been pretty obvious from the start, but at least it's finally official right here, and it's also a very nice fan service -y kind of scene, so if you're into that, so what's the rundown? On this week's episode of Tokyo Ghoul, action all over your face, my friends! This week's episode was just plain exciting. The last couple episodes of Tokyo Ghoul Route A have just kicked plain ass. And my favorite thing about this week's episode is that there was a lot of showing and not very much telling. This was an episode that used its visuals to tell its story, and I thought that was really clever. Not to mention, just the animation looked pretty damn good in this week's episode. And there were just so many amazing scenes to talk about. But let's talk about Arima. He's definitely the one that I think a lot of people are going to remember from this week's episode because it was the first action scene that involved the character and he didn't even say a freaking word. He just came in there and tore up the owl like a boss. The whole scene was handled really, really well and the designs and the uses of his weapons were really cool and unlike anything that I've seen in the rest of the series. I especially love how that actually helped all the other uh, people who were still getting killed by the Algiri group to start fighting back, especially that one creepy guy, Hachikawa, who has the real nasty looking lips. Like, just by him pulling down his jacket and showing his face off to the Algiri group, they started freaking out and had their tails between their legs. Or their cogane between their legs. The point is, that's just one of the many action scenes from this week's episode. I especially loved Amon versus Kaneki. I thought it was handled really well, and I liked all the atmospheric moments, like when debris would fall and create a huge dust cloud, and then the next thing you see would just be slashes inside of it when they were actually attacking each other. It was really tense and awesome. Amon's transformation for his weapon looked really cool, and I can see that being a very popular cosplay in the future. Really, you're just putting a lot of work into the actual weapon itself, but I would love to see you someone try to actually pull that off, it would look really, really awesome. I am slightly disappointed that we didn't get to see Kaneki using his Kakuja again, and it almost happened. You could see the mask was forming over his face, but then he suppressed it. And I guess this just has something to do with the fact that he doesn't want to use those powers because he's just going to go into Berserker mode. But we want to see Berserker mode! We want to see that badass stuff! Uh, but despite that, I was very satisfied with their battle and how it was handled, and I love the ambiguity of it because I don't know if Ammon is alive or dead. I hope he's alive. He's definitely an awesome character, and uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I really wish that the series would have focused more on the ghoul investigators and have made them more the main characters. But then again, this is also a series where there really isn't, like, a clear-cut good guy or bad guy. Like, while watching this week's episode, I found myself wondering, like, I'm not sure who to root for because... At the beginning of the episode, it seemed like Algiri was just destroying everybody, and you were glad because of all the terrible things that were happening to the people at Anteku. But then the ghoul investigators were being destroyed, and you started feeling bad for them, and then when they started taking charge at the end, you felt good again. So it, it, it's really weird. It's not exactly black and white with these characters, and that's uh, definitely one of the biggest themes of the show as well, you know, because they're so different, and yet they're so similar at the same time, humans and ghouls. It's a, it's a really interesting thing that they're doing with this one, and I think there is only going to be one more episode left after this one, which is really surprising, because they have a lot to explain, and there's a lot of characters that they haven't even used yet, and uh, I don't know, I was just kind of hoping maybe it'd go on a little bit longer. I might be wrong about that. Tell me if I am in the comments section below. Uh, but still, this was a badass episode of Tokyo Ghoul Root A, filled to the brim with lots of action, which if you love that stuff, you're totally gonna dig this one. I'm giving this week's episode a 5 out of 5. Just another awesome episode of Tokyo Ghoul Root A, and one of the best ones of the entire series, as far as I'm concerned. Do you guys have a favorite moment from this week's episode? Please tell me in the comments section below. What did you think of the battle between Kaneki and Amon? Is Amon going to live? What's up with the owl? Why did the owl take away Yoshimura's body? Is it because that's actually the daughter? What's up with that anyway? Please tell me your thoughts and all your theories in the comment section below and what you hope to see from the finale of Tokyo Ghoul Route A.
Thank you guys for watching my review. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and like the video. And before you guys leave, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow us on social media like Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching and stay dandy, baby.